Greetings, Go fans. So today, I thought we would look a little bit at one of the most popular, probably not the most popularly played, but an opening that most people will be familiar with and or have at least heard of, and has influenced the way Go was played for hundreds of years before the introduction of Komi. So if you haven't guessed, it's the Shisaku opening, which looks like this. Oh, not like that. Um, it's basically the pattern up to here is considered the Shusaka opening. Uh, and the reason this opening... Um, so if you look at it from a modern day perspective, it looks a little funny because normally white wouldn't approach on the second move, but white would take another corner. So we have to think about why, uh, you know, at that time period, white would play this way. So you have to remember that in this time, there was no komi. No komi means that it's... He's, uh, it's on the impetus is on white to try to control uh, to make the game difficult and to try to kind of come back from behind because black has the first move advantage. So the idea of before was thought that well they didn't play four four points but let's say you played like this. Then if you played a peaceful opening where everyone just encloses everything, it's really easy for black because black has um, you know points and it's very easy to calculate. Well, who has how much? So white would often approach. And the idea is that you don't want to give black two enclosures because that makes it very easy. You can't really stop black from getting one enclosure, but you could stop black from getting two. So if you approach here, then black goes here. The most common move you'd find next is, oh, you know, approach another corner. And this is where we find, uh, you know, black's super famous move, the Kosumi, Shisaku's Kosumi. And you have to think about why this move is so good and how it relates to general opening theory. Um, I'm going to make another video on general opening theory, uh, but I just wanted to introduce the opening uh, up to here. So basically the reasoning for this Kosumi is you want to aim at this pincer to pressure white stone. You're also making it difficult for white to develop the top. You have an uh, a pincer that you can play against the P17 stone at the top is black. So say that white encloses. Well, let's let's actually just go a little further. We can easily see what happens. So let's say white extends. I want to explain why these moves are played. Um, but let's say it's like this, and then white, you know, tries to expand the top. Well, then it's well. There's a couple things here. One is if white expands the top. Uh, in a low fashion, black can press white, like this, which makes the uh, K17 stone a little bit uninteresting, and it's a little bit hard to actually develop into a large moyo. So this is a fairly easy and peaceful type of way to uh, limit white's potential. Um, but let's say white was more ambitious. White wanted to, you know, play high so that you could build more stuff. This is maybe a little more modern. Then you'd see black invade. And it's actually hard, uh, not hard, but it gives black a way into the upper side by having these stones attack these stones, right? You could imagine a very simple continuation. And then, you know, black could make something in the top. And white didn't actually get uh, much at the top. Of course, in this position right now, you have to be careful of your group on the right is black. Uh, it's actually not really that bad. It's a little cramped, but you destroyed the whole top side. Um, you wouldn't necessarily need to play it now either, but the point is that it gives black options to move into the top side. So the reason this Kosumi that uh, black plays is so strong is that it actually has three aims. It aims at the pincer, it aims at uh, the press, and it aims at the other pincer. It also helps to strengthen the R16 stone, obviously. You can imagine if you didn't play this move, right, you just... Uh, played something here, for instance, then white can press black, which might be uninteresting, or, you know, even worse, black pincers here. This is a really common mistake. I think I addressed this in an over-concentration video before. Um, but you can imagine a shape like this, and then a shape like this. Um, and it's not very uh, good for black to play this way usually, because your shape becomes very over-concentrated, black would probably press. 
and then, you know, why could come back and do something here? Uh, and you're really spending all these moves for, like, what is barely a third and mostly second line territory, uh, barely third line territory, a lot of it's second line territory. So it's not really um, very efficient. So removing options from your opponent and gaining options for yourself is a really uh, fundamental principle in the opening. You can be, you can play a decent opening, but if you suddenly find yourself not having a good move, then it's very likely uh, that you will not, that if you run out of good moves that you think you can play that are good, and your opponent still can find good looking moves, decent moves, just from an intuitive standpoint, um, then you will most likely fall behind in the opening. A lot of the opening is not just getting to the largest place first, but you want to be able to set up your next move. So I just thought I'd talk a little bit about this in this short video. Um, other things to talk about in this opening are direction. So why does white play here instead of, you know, over here? Well, actually, this is um, totally playable, but the difficulty is if black encloses, if uh, the general theory or idea is that if black encloses one, white should enclose the other, that way they can remain equal on uh, terms of points. But then, you know, black gets a nice pincer. At that time period, this move was uh, a little uncommon. You'll see that white tends to play low, and then if it was like this, then white would feel kind of compelled to stop uh, black from pincering on the bottom. It's similar to why, uh, not here, why when white plays this, the next most common move is for white to extend on the right, because, or on the right here, because white, getting this pincer and extension is really, really strong. Um, you could imagine, like, if white played here, then now the whole this five space extension is really big, and this doesn't cover too much in um, beginner opening books usually, but the reason it's so strong is, of course, white can come in here, but if you have a weak stone here, then you can't reasonably come in. If you come in, right, then black jumps and you run out, but then now your other stone's under attack. So it becomes a somewhat unreasonable, not there unreasonable fight because you're going to end up with two weak groups while black only has one weak group. So it's a difficult uh, way to play and it's not usually very good. You know, you could imagine all sorts of things here. Yeah, not not very good because so so it, it essentially makes that this area in these five spaces essentially becomes like territory because uh temporary territory as long as white is weak on the bottom side here so you often see i mean this never happens in games but if white were to play something here white would want to settle this somehow like solid solidly you know something like this and then come back and invade this area but locally these exchanges here even though white settles are better for black black gains more points in better shape but white has to do something if uh, she wants to come on to the right side here. Okay. And lastly, a thing about direction. So we talked about why white approaches this corner. And we talk about, you know, why doesn't black enclose this corner? This is actually pretty common. Um, oftentimes white will just go back to enclosing and it becomes an even exchange before black comes here. Uh, but, you know, it does give white some chances to play some uh, difficult moves, especially the Taisha was popular at that time period. Um, and I won't get into this because it's extremely... Uh, if you play the main line, it's not so bad, but the rest of it is fairly complicated. This is the main line. This is pretty simple to understand. Both sides are just moving, <laughs> moving out. But there are a lot of tricky moves and trick plays and difficult moves. Like, white could push here, or, you know, white could play... Actually, pushing is probably the mostly the, the bulk of the difficult moves. Um, black does have to play this, black could play here, which aims at both the uh, Hane and the jump without reinforcing white as much. There's a lot of... It's, it's difficult. So that's often why you see black play this one first. Um, it also gives... 
at the time period, White might forego the enclosure and just, like, also pincer in a difficult way. Like, something like this. Um, and then if it's, like, here, you might see this press, and then a jump. So it gives White opportunity to make the game more complicated, which Black would like to avoid in a no-coming game. Um, but it's important to understand that this opening was so prevalent for so long that, you know, it developed a lot of countermeasures. So instead of um, playing here, uh, Shusai, uh, and uh, many other players, but mostly Shusai popularized this move of playing here, because it stopped Black from, uh, you know, taking this corner, uh, making that rotating shape. Now, one thing to take note of is if you play something like a 4-4 point in a modern game or a 3-4 point in, the mo in a modern game in the bottom right, it gives Black the opportunity to make this Mukai... Uh, it's called Mukai Komoku, or facing 3-4 points. Um, and that's pretty good. It's pretty good because it makes the game very territorial for Black and very, uh, in a way, easy to control the flow. So we could get into this opening at another time. Okay, I think that about covers it for this video. Um, I just wanted to briefly introduce the Shusaku opening and yeah, talk about the main ideas behind it and talk about Shusaku's move, which was uh, his famous move, which is aside from the ear reddening, ear reddening move, his other famous move is this Kosumi. And yeah, okay. Peace.